What is going on YouTube? So come back today with my Sunbelt Conference preview. So if I'm being honest, this might be the worst conference in college football, but it also has some intriguing storylines at the same time. So just did my AAC Conference preview not too long ago, so uh, moving right into the heart of the Group 5 conferences now. Um, got 11 teams to talk about in a Sunbelt Conference that while it might not even be a thing in five years, will at least look a lot different. Um, this one only features one. It doesn't have any. Well, it doesn't have any divisions. It has 11 teams, and I'm going to go through the 11 teams rather quickly. Um, this video will not be as long or, I guess, as in depth as any of the other ones. But I'm still going to do the same format where I talk about every team and go through my awards at the very end. So I'm uh, going to go bottom to top like I normally do, and let's go ahead and start at the bottom. So. Number 11, I have the ULM, the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks, um, a team that runs into a very, very tough schedule in 2016. Uh, they have to play OU on the road, Georgia Southern on the road, Auburn on the road, um, Arkansas State on the road, and Appalachian State, and at Georgia State. So they have the hardest schedule by far, um, and they catch all of the top four teams in the conference all on the road. So go on to number 10, and I've got the New Mexico State Aggies, um, a team that's kind of gotten rather for, or has kind of gone rather forgotten in the last couple of years in college football. Outside of their running back, they don't have much in place, but they do have a third-team All-American at running back in Larry Rose third, so watch out for him. But at the same time, they also catch Arkansas State on the road, Troy on the road, and they also have to face... Uh, Kentucky and Texas A&M, two SEC teams out of conference, so that is not going to be an easy schedule as, or either. So move on to number nine. I've got the Idaho Vandals. Again, another team they faced at Washington, at Washington State, out of conference, um, at Appalachian State, at UL Lafayette, um, and then they finish off the year with South Alabama and Georgia State. This is a team that will probably not, or that will not be in the FBS next year. They, not even probably, they will not be. Um, they will be sliding down to the FCS. So you got to wonder what their motivation levels are going to be like. So move on to number eight, and I've got the Texas State Bobcats, um, a team that's hard to figure out. They just made the jump to the FBS about three, four years ago. Um, they do have to play Houston at home, um, at Ohio, at Arkansas, so got some tough games. Um, in the conference, it is pretty manageable. Uh, they, if they can pull off an upset, they got Arkansas or Arkansas State at home. Um, obviously, they, at Appalachian State, it's going to be a tough one, but they also do draw UL Lafayette and Troy at home. So uh, there's some winnable games against some of the upper-tier teams in the conference. So at number seven, I have the South Alabama Jaguars. Um, a team, again, a lot like Texas State, made the jump to the FBS not too long ago and has seen a pretty good rise in, um, in, what, you know, in what they've done the last couple of years. Uh, this team that has the potential to be a bowl team this year, they have to go to Mississippi State to start the year. So that will be a tough start. But then they get Nichols State, Georgia Southern, UL Lafayette, a, a stretch that will probably be a season-defining stretch for them if they can become a bowl team or not. So at number six, I've got the University of Louisiana Lafayette Rage and Cajuns. Um, so a team that does another team that lands a favorable schedule, they get to start out the year uh, with South Alabama, and then they get App or South Alabama at home, and they get Appalachian State at home. Uh, the road games are very manageable in conference at ULM. Uh, at Georgia is going to be a tough game later in the year, um, but at ULM, at Georgia Southern, at New Mexico State, at Texas State. So a team that could, in my mind, will be a bowl team this year. So at number five, I got the Troy Trojans, a team bringing back a pretty good offense that. Um, can take advantage of a pretty easy scheduling conference. Um, again, they have some pretty manageable road games at Georgia Southern, probably the toughest, and then at South Alabama, at Texas State, at Idaho. Um, at Clemson's obviously going to be a tough one uh, to start off the year, um, but they get it right after Austin P. so they can um, you know, at least start out the year one and one. So at number four, I've got the Georgia State Jaguars. Uh, Panthers, excuse me. Uh, sorry to all Georgia State fans out there. But this is a team that was really, really hot through the end of the year last year. Even beat Georgia Southern at one point, ended up making a bowl game. Um, this is a team that I can see progressing even further into 2016 um, and maybe being able to contend with with those you know top three tier one teams in the um, 
Sun Belt to kind of break through and contend for a conference title. So at number three, I've got the Arkansas State Red Wolves, the former con or reigning conference champions, um, undefeated in conference last year, and uh, a team that has a chance to repeat. They lose Freddie Knight, and they do have a tremendous amount of turnover. But again, you can never count out the reigning conference champions, and um, the way they end the year will be their season-defining stretch at Troy, at UL Lafayette, and then at Texas State. A few middle-tier teams all on the road, if they can clear that, and that might be a key to them winning the conference once again. So at number two, I've got the Georgia Southern, um, excuse me, Georgia Southern Eagles, a uh, team that is going to, it looks like they're making a few tweaks to their offense this year. Um, running in with a new coach in Tyson Summers, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, this is a team that uh, came very, very close to winning the Sun Belt in 2000, um, in 2015. And again, I think the season-defining game for them will be in or against Appalachian State at home on October 27th. So bringing to who I think will finish number one, I have the Appalachian State Mountaineers. If you guys saw my top 25, I actually had them number or number 25. I think this is an App State team that's ready to take things over, um, ready to make a big mark inside of the Sun Belt. Um, a lot of returning talent on offense and defense. Taylor Lamb on offense should be able to lead that team at quarterback. Latrell Gibbs should be able to uh, lead that team on defense, one of the better defenders in the conference. So I do think App State will win the conference. Now move into some of my conference awards, uh, Dark Horse and then Disappointment. So Offensive Player of the Year for me will be Taylor Lamb. Can can just mention him with Appalachian State. Um, a quarterback that I think will be the best in the conference and a quarterback returning an 11-win team, uh, probably to having another solid season. So my Defensive Player of the Year will go to Xavier Woodson Luster, linebacker for Arkansas State. Um, I, I think with the amount of turnover that Arkansas State has to be able to return to that um, reigning conference champion form, they're going to need some leadership on the field, and I think he is their overall best player right now. So my newcomer of the year will be Darrington Evans, um, wide receiver for Appalachian State. He will come in and start as a freshman. Um, again, Taylor Lane will need some new receivers to look to, and I think this is the most talented of all the freshmen that App State was able to bring in. So my coach of the year will go to Tyson Summers, Georgia Southern. I think if he's able to come in and get Georgia Southern at least in the top three and get him back to another bowl game, that will get him the respect, the respectability that you will need to be able to win another or to win a coach of the year award. Um, I think App State and Arkansas State have already set themselves apart at the top of the conference, and I think Georgia Southern has a lot of um, uncertainties around them. Like I said, new system, new coach, so we'll really see what happens there. And talk about Georgia Southern a little bit further. Um, I actually have them as my dark horse. I think Statesboro will be an extremely tough pit place to play this year. They have a great offensive system, one of the only option teams in the country, and should be a dangerous team in the conference this year. So my disappointment is going to be the Idaho Vandals. Like I mentioned before, um, th this team probably won't be very good this year. Uh, they're heading into the season knowing that they're dropping to the SES next year so we don't really know what to expect from them so that pretty much does it for this video that wraps up the Sun Belt not much to talk about with the conference like I said one of the worst ones in college football but that's pretty much it see ya